The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have beheld Christ's glory. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. In the word was life, and the life was the light of all people.
prophecy from Isaiah 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burdens and the bar across their back and the rod of their oppressors you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all of the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. A child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish a hold of justice and righteousness.
the Christmas story begins from Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. From Luke chapter 2, the Christmas story continues. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring... I I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. At this time, I'd like to invite our children to come forward for a message. Welcome. Why don't you guys just all have a seat down here so we can all see. Great. Welcome, everybody. Yep. There we go. So, can you face me so I can see your pretty faces and your nice outfits tonight? Yes. How is everybody? Good? I have a question for you guys. Is anybody afraid of the dark? Yeah. What helps? Do you have a nightlight? Does that help a little bit? What about maybe you leave the hallway light on? Something like that, right? Well, what if this was our nightlight? 
What do you think? Would that help and not be so afraid of the dark? I think it would too. It's very nice. Does anybody know what this is? Do you know what it's called? Oh, it's, it would have a candle in it normally. Do you know? It's called a lantern. And before we had like electric lights like these, when people would need to go to walk at night, they would put a candle in something like this, like a lantern, and then everybody could see, right? Kind of like a night light, right? Yeah. So, but what it starts to happen is that we have light that would be inside the lantern itself. But Jesus, notice I have the cross in here, and this would be like where the baby uh, Jesus would have laid in the manger, right? So Jesus is sometimes called the light of the world. And we are not supposed to keep that light that we have of Jesus in our hearts to ourselves, are we? We're supposed to spread it all out, right? Later in the service, you've probably got some candles and some things on the way in, right? You got some candles? Those candles, we're going to actually spread the light throughout the church here so that everybody can see the light of Christ and the love of God for each of us, right? Yeah. So, who knows what one of these are? A glow stick. It's a glow stick. Wouldn't that be a great nightlight, too? Can you start passing those around over there? Pass some of these around. Pass some of these around. There you go. Pass one to your friends. Okay. Pass some more back behind you. Okay. Who knows how to make them work? Okay. Go ahead. Get them all bent. Now, when you go back to your seats, you're going to spread that light so that everybody can see that with us, right? Yeah. Can you pray with me tonight? Can we make big arms and go one, two, three, and go clap them together? One, two, three. Dear Jesus, we are so thankful that you are the light of the world. Help each of us to spread your light and your love to others. Amen. Thanks for coming up tonight. rise in body or spirit as the Christmas story concludes. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, 
the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. you to be seated.
and let us pray. Gracious God, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. And take our hearts and set the fire of the Holy Spirit in them. Amen. In the early 2000s, I went on a Caribbean cruise that had these multiple port stops over a week's time. And as with many port stops, they offer all kinds of excursions for the tourists to enjoy their points of interest of that country. I found that I had no interest in any of the commercialized types of stops, but instead gravitated towards these more natural places an orchid garden, a submarine dive to see sea turtles, kayaking and snorkeling in the ocean. But on one of the port stops, I decided to visit Harrison's Caves in Barbados. I wanted to go see these geological things called stalagmites and stalactites. Stalagmites are these mineral formations that rise up like a column reaching towards the ceiling of a cave. The stalactites are the same kind of formations, but instead they hang down from the ceiling and it is when they connect together with the cropping of the stalagmites above that you see their full glory of beauty. And on this excursion, you rode a tram and trailer down as far as the beginning of some subterranean stream passages, and then you got out and traversed by foot. This is where you quickly saw how narrow the paths were becoming. Our guide helped us to venture through tunnel to tunnel that were equipped with these electrical industrial lights shining the way. However, at one point along the tour, the guide stopped us and told us that he was going to turn off the lights in the tunnel so that we could experience total darkness. Of course, when you are so deep into the earth, there is no ambient light available. There is not a chance that any distant starlight or other reflected light can reach you from the outside. And when those lights went out, it was truly total darkness. You could not even see your hand right in front of your face. It was a darkness so complete that it was disorienting and overwhelming. The guide had warned us to be touching the sides of the narrow lime bedrock tunnel when he flipped the switch. This was a very good suggestion as within a matter of seconds, you lost all sense of direction. You had no idea which direction was what and everything was skewed in the darkness. After a few moments from somewhere down the tunnel, someone struck a match, a single match. And that tiny light broke through the darkness and immediately restored your senses. Although, although it was only just a glimmer, just a tiny point of light, it had immense power against the darkness. Now today, someone would just flip on their flashlight on their phone and the whole cave would have been filled with light. But that flicker of flame, that burst of light, guided your senses and relieved your anxiety of heart. On this Christmas Eve, just like every year, we hear about a light. We hear the prophet Isaiah foretelling that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And then we hear on a night long ago, a baby, a Christ child, the Son of God, burst into the darkness of the world to be the light of all people. 
But it was not a spotlight event or some out-of-this-world fireworks display. Rather, in an out-of-the-way town called Bethlehem, in a homeless shelter called a stable, it is where God burst forth in the world as a person, as a human being. God struck a match, a tiny match, to illumine the darkness, to bring a ray of light into the dark tunnels of our lives, to restore our senses, to drive away the terror and disorientation of our living in dark, to relieve the anxiety of our hearts. And this is what we hear tonight. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. As the Christmas carol, the first Noel, reminds us that the star was the beacon of light. The shepherds looked up and saw a star shining in the east beyond them far, and to the earth it gave great light, and so it continued both day and night. Even the title of the song tells the story, the first Noel. Noel is a word that traces its origin back to Latin for the word natalis, which can mean birthday. Think, think like the neonatal wing of a hospital. For it was at this very special birthday, in this wing of the stable where the great light sprung forth into the world. After receiving the Lord's Supper this night, we are going to hear more about the light, the great light, which has come into the world. We're going to actually pass that light around this sanctuary to one another. But to first prepare you for this tradition of spreading the light, I want to prepare you by taking you back for a moment to that absolute darkness, the disorienting darkness of the tunnel. When that match was struck and the tiny light filled the tunnel, there was this soft-spoken, <gasps> that spontaneously came from all of us in that group. It was a kind of unspoken breath of gratitude that was issued forth. I cannot believe that anyone in that diverse group of people wanted to return to that complete and overwhelming darkness. So as the light, the tiny light of Christ is offered tonight to you, consider your own receptivity to that light, will you? Consider your openness to God's light and love offered to you. Consider how difficult and discouraging it is to grope through the darkness as you try to find your way through life. Consider how even a flicker of light in a tunnel gives you hope on a journey. Consider how marvelous it is to see how just a tiny glimmer of light, once shared with one another, overcomes the darkness and shines forth with the love of the Christ child born this day. For something incredible, incredible happens in the sharing of that candlelight. The light offered to you does not dim as it is shared. Your flame remains in its own glow, but if anything else, there's that slight burst of brightness of joy as your candle wick touches another. And as you receive the light and as you pass it on, the cumulative power against the darkness grows and grows. And the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. This holy night, we celebrate that from a tiny point of light in Bethlehem so long ago, that a star in the sky was pointing to the cradle, the manger in the stable. God had broken into the darkness, and now we, like so many others throughout the centuries since then, are offered the power of this light to receive it for ourselves and then to pass it on to others. It is like those stalagmites 
that reach from the earth floor up towards the stalagmites that hang down, reaching out to us. We are the stalagmites, and God's great light is the stalactites, and it is when they connect together that the true glory is seen by the world. People of God, the light of the world is Jesus. The light of the world is God's love revealed in human form. And the light shines in the darkness. The true light burst into the world as God struck a match to light the way for the shepherds and for each of us. For the great light of Christ shining bright for all the people, we give thanks to God. And let us pray together. We pray that Christians everywhere will be beacons of light, proclaiming the good news of Jesus' birth to all people. May our liturgies and songs deepen our hope in a world especially where strife and poverty of body and soul and difficulties of separation shroud the season. We pray for all in any difficulty, for those who are sick and for those who journey towards death. May the light of Christ shine upon them and break their yokes of oppression. Let us rejoice in Christ's birth. And all God's people said, Amen.
At this time, the ushers will receive the Lord's offering. Let us give thanks and praise. O God of all blessings, we give you thanks for what you have given us and ask that you accept the gifts back to you, our time, our talents, and our possessions. This day we especially remember your extraordinary gift of Jesus, who was born and lived among us so that we might one day live with you. Amen. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table where Christ meets you. Eat, rejoice, and be glad. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to be seated, and the ushers will direct you forward.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of wonder, in Jesus we behold the light of the world to come near. As you have come among us now, send us out in joy, hastening to share the good news of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through the Spirit dwelling among us now and forever. Amen.
the great news from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. all-powerful and unseen God. The coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen.
The peace and joy of Christmas be with you all. Go be the light of Christ.